Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, Religious Education Initiative Week 23, Day 2. We're going to change course a little bit and read something very different, uh, moving from the 1300s last time to the 1900s. Uh, we're reading. We're going to be reading uh, an excerpt from a, a book called Beginning to Pray by Metropolitan Anthony Bloom. He was a bishop of a community of Russian Orthodox exiles in Western Europe in the late 20th century. Now, he speaks clearly and beautifully in all of his books about the realities of the Christian life. Uh, and here he's talking about why it is that sometimes, indeed often, we feel that God is absent when we pray. So he says, First of all, it is very important to remember that prayer is an encounter and a relationship, a relationship which is deep, and this relationship cannot be forced either on us or on God. The fact that God can make himself present or can leave us with the sense of his absence is part of this live and real relationship. If we could mechanically draw him into an encounter, force him to meet us, simply because we have chosen this moment to meet him, there would be no relationship and no encounter. We can do that with an image, with the imagination, or with the various idols we put in front of ourselves instead of God. We can do nothing of the sort with the living God, any more than we can do it with a living person. A relationship must begin and develop in mutual freedom. If you look at the relationship in terms of mutual relationship, you will see that God could complain about us a great deal more than we about him. We complain that he does not make himself present to us for the few minutes we reserve for him, but what about the 23 and a half hours during which God may be knocking at our door and we answer, I am busy, I'm sorry, or when we do not answer at all because we do not even hear the knock at the door of our heart, of our minds, of our conscience, of our life. So there is a situation in which we have no right to complain of the absence of God because we are a great deal more absent than he ever is. I love this passage. I think it communicates so clearly a baseline of how we have to approach God that is very different from what most of us, I think, assume uh, is going to be the case at the beginning. And he kind of makes two points. That, uh, that come through to me here. The first is that, that reminder that you know, this is a real relationship and you know, God is present with us. We know this else from elsewhere. You know, we know that God is not absent from us. And he says there's a way of he, that God allows us to feel his absence. We'll come back to that. But just because we feel that God is absent, that we don't, we're not conscious of God's presence in our lives, doesn't mean he actually is absent. It's very likely that we're thinking that because we are absent from him. We're living our lives in an entirely divorced way from God. And to expect that he'll just sort of be there for us to pull on when we need to, when we're not present with him, this is not particularly just or right. However, the, the other piece is that although God is never absent from us, God is never absent from anywhere, and yet he can allow us to feel that sense of his absence. Because if he didn't, if he were always there, then we would take advantage. We would believe that he was just the God in a box that we, you know, sort of put in our pocket and have with us whenever we want. And that isn't a functional relationship. It can't be that way. So sometimes, even when we try to approach God, even when we try to have an encounter with him, we want to have that encounter, sometimes we feel as though God doesn't answer our prayers. And we need to respond to that, not with anger or frustration, but with a recognition that we have been absent from God ourselves. We need to not give up just because he's not there right away in the instant that we you know, think it would be convenient for him to come to us. Um, there's a purpose and a necessity for God's absence from us, even when we are seeking him. 
And it's that reality of freedom, that reality of relationship. We can't put God in a box any more than we can put anyone else that we love in a box. So uh, we'll read some more of uh, Metropolitan Anthony Bloom, uh, I think, in other weeks. But for now, I'll say God bless you, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on Friday for day three.